In my first years at Wat Damasadit, there was another monk who would spend a lot of time with John Fuang. And it seemed to me he was getting away with all kinds of things. If I tried doing the things he did, I'd always get sharply criticized. And it first struck me as unfair. Why was it that he got away with these things and I couldn't? Then I finally realized I was getting training. He wasn't. And I learned a basic principle of the forest tradition. Is so when the, the teacher criticizes a student, he's not criticizing the student per se, he's criticizing the student's defilements. And it's good to make that distinction. He's criticizing because he sees that the student is willing to learn and has the capacity to learn. The people who don't have that capacity don't get criticized. I visited John Mahabu one time after John Fung had passed away and went with the monk who had visited John Mahabu many times. And in the course of the half hour we were there, I got criticized three times. Later that night, the other monk was the monk who was giving a Dharma talk. At Wata, this was at Wadasokaram. And I happened to come in halfway there. He, he didn't see me. He was talking about the event, about how jealous he was. He'd been to see John Mahabu, and John Mahabu didn't even care enough to criticize him once ever. And here I'd gone there just once and gotten three times. So it's important you understand this principle. That if you can separate yourself from your defilement, that John has done a good job. He's pointing out that's something that you're doing that's not quite right. And he cares enough to point it out. And once you see that it's not right, it's a good time to let it go. It's a good lesson in not self. John Mahabu made a comparison with a boxing instructor. If he sees any places where the, the student leaves himself open, he'll kick him right there, punch him right there. Not because he wants to kick or wants to punch, but he's warning, don't open yourself up there. In other words, don't be open to greed, aversion, and delusion right there. And sometimes you get criticized and you don't see what you've done wrong, which means you have to take it back and think about it. One of the big lessons I got from John Fuang was how to address a request or a question to a, a senior monk. I'd come up in the evening to fix up his hut, and if I had any questions, that was the time to ask. But there were times I'd start a question, he'd cut me short, and there would be no opportunity for questions that day. And I finally realized it was the way I phrased things. So as I was going up the hill to his hut, I'd have to think, what's the best way to phrase this so it doesn't sound like I'm imposing on him or expecting him to do something that I should be doing myself? Or all the other things you have to think about when you're addressing a senior monk. And it stood me in good stead. Years later, I was taking part in a project to print a book for the big commemoration for John Lee when they moved his body from the old Sala at Watasukaram to the large Wihan. They had appointed a, a committee to basically put together a book that would be printed and then handed out. And the committee met once and decided I should be the one to do the job. So I was called in. And so I basically laid out the plan for the book, and they wanted to run it past the abbot. So I took the chairman of the committee with me. And when we arrived there, the chairman of the committee opened the discussion in a way that I immediately knew was wrong from all my time with John Fuang. And sure enough, the abbots, you know, snapped right back at me and said, we pointed the committee to do the work. Why are you giving me the work? So I stepped in immediately and said, no, it's not, we're not asking you to do the work. We've actually done the work already. We just want to run it past you. And he turned to me and talked to me perfectly nicely. And from that point on, I learned one, not to take the chairman of the committee with me next time I talked to the abbot. And two, I realized that John Fuang had been training me. how to deal with difficult situations or difficult people in the future. 
So the purpose of criticism as you're practicing is not to put you down. It's to encourage you. On the one hand, as I said, to show that the teacher cares and sees that you're willing and able to learn. And also to make you think, this thing I think that I'm doing is right. Maybe it's not right after all. Those are sometimes the hardest lessons to learn, but also often the most important. Because a lot of opinions we have about what's right and what's wrong, if we don't step back from them, we're going to suffer from them and do a lot of unskillful things because of them. So this is a good lesson in not self. This is something to let go. You don't have to identify with it. If you do identify with it, you're going to get hit. You're leaving yourself open. And if your pride gets in the way, okay, then that's some, something else you have to let go of. And John Yanadema tells a great story about his early years with John Cha. One day he was coming back from the alms round, and another one of the Western monks came up to him and started gossiping about some of the other monks there at the monastery. And John Yanadema didn't want to hear this. So he moved away. But it put him in a foul mood. As he was coming back to the monastery, though, he ran into a John Cha, who saw him and said, Good morning, in English. Now, apparently living with a John Cha, there were hundreds of monks. It was very rare that you got addressed by a John Cha like that. So it lifted his spirits. He decided that night he wanted to massage a John Cha's feet. So he went when the monks were sitting in a circle around a John Cha, asking questions about this, that. And John Cha saw John Yonadoma come. So he told the other monks to, to go and do their evening chanting while Yonadoma was going to massage his feet. So he sat there massaging at John Cha's feet. For a while, nothing was said. He was thinking to himself what an ideal opportunity this was. As the sound of the chanting in the background, here he was massaging the feet of an arahant. Thing is about as close as to heaven as it gets on the heavenly on the human realm. All of a sudden, he was massaging one of John Cha's feet, and John Cha took the other foot and kicked him in the chest, stomped on him in the chest. He said, "Look, don't let your state of mind depend on the words of other people." In other words, don't let the other person's words get you down, or even the John's good morning. Don't let that get your spirits up. If your words, the words of other people have that big an influence on your mind, you're setting yourself up for a fall. So John Yanadama says he's really proud of the fact that he has a John, John's footprint stamped on his chest. He's a sign of the, a John's compassion. And that's the right attitude to have. The criticism is meant to improve. It's not meant to tear down. And as long as you understand that principle, you can benefit from it.